Hey guys, Comic Book Steve here again with another haul. Uh, this is a haul from two comic shops I took a trip out to today with my wife. We went to Bellingham, Massachusetts. Uh, these stores are based off a recommendation from a fellow YouTuber, Amazing Marfinator1028. If you guys haven't checked it out, you really should. It's got some cool videos. Uh, thanks again, Amazing, for the recommendation. This is from uh, 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 Rubber Chicken and Friendly Neighborhood Comics. Friendly Neighborhood Comics I had actually been to once before um, last year, but it was about about time that I took a trip over there again. And it's very close to Rubber, Rubber Chicken Comics. Uh, it's like a mile away, maybe less, mile and a half. Uh, really close. Uh, so I had a good time checking those out. Um, thank you again for recommending those. Always good to get a recommendation on some stores. And uh, yeah, here we go. These are a bit random, so I'm not quite sure. I can't remember which ones I got from which store. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it. This is Spider-Man Team Up number one. Got that for 50 cents. Nothing too special about it other than it was a Spider-Man number one that I uh, did not have in my collection. I think I had this when it first came out years ago, but uh, I've since gotten rid of it. Uh, so it was about time I uh, picked it up again. Got a classic X-Men team right there. 90s, very 90s going on. This was in the middle of the Clone Saga. Although you wouldn't really be able to tell from the cover. Let's actually get some more light shining on this. It's a little better. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, next one is Dazzler number one. Got that for a buck. This is from the 70s. So uh, I'm not too partial into Dazzler, but uh, it's always good to find a nice condition Bronze Age book. Um, I think this this cover is kind of weird. Uh, it really reminds me. I, I it looks like it's from the seventies. You can you can tell it's from the seventies. It reminds me of the uh, Star Wars uh, Christmas special for some reason. Just like the way it has these uh, various characters on the cover. I, I, can, I can always hear it saying, "And now starring Iron Man, Kurt Wagner, and the Amazing Spider-Man, plus the villainous Enchantress." I don't know. It just seems so, so like hokey the way they, the way they display them in bubbles on the cover. Uh, yeah, haven't haven't read it, um, but I'll, I'm glad to have this uh, piece of history in my collection. I think at one time they were gonna make a Dazzler movie, and they uh, they never went through with it. Siege Spider-Man. This was a fun one. Uh, this is a variant edition. Don't know what the ratio on the variant is, but uh, it's a book I've sort of eyed up, been eyeing uh, for a while. I wanted to find it for a really cheap price because it's nothing, nothing special. It just has Spider-Man and Venom fighting. Uh, the variant's fun to get. Uh, as always, I think this was $4, uh, so that was fun. I don't usually see this variant. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen it before. So doesn't mean anything. Just cool. Miss Marvel number 19. Uh, this is when Miss Marvel, uh, like for some reason in the early Miss Marvel comics, she, she, it was like a split personality Miss Marvel. Uh, so Carol Danvers didn't know she was Miss Marvel, which is kind of weird to think about now. Uh, and this issue, uh, I believe, and uh, don't 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 quote me on this, or please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I believe this is the issue where she, uh, realize she realizes that she's Miss Marvel. And then the issue after this is when she gets she does a new direction where she gets her classic Miss Marvel costume and uh, goes onward from there. Uh, but I've been looking for this one uh, just because of the significance of the character. Uh, I never really see it in back issue bins, so I was glad to find it for I think I paid four dollars for this one. So really nice looking copy. Very happy. Uh, this one was about four bucks. This is Ghost Rider number 81. It's the last issue of the original Ghost Rider series. Uh, really awesome looking copy. No, no breaks in the black. There's maybe a few very small spine ticks hanging out on the spine, but nothing, nothing drastic. Uh, I think it's a really beautiful looking copy. Uh, it's uh, like I mentioned many times before. I love last issues of books, especially these older series, because they're Usually by then the print runs pretty low, so they're not as easy to find. This one certainly fits that bill. Uh, it's not terribly easy to get. Not super expensive either. Uh, not super high in demand, but 
you know, for some reason there ever is a like high demand in Ghostwriter books. Uh, this one would definitely be one of the harder ones to find. Uh, and it's just an interesting piece of history, you know. Uh, Ghostwriter's last issue. Uh, it says the saga concludes, which we all know is not true now. Johnny Blaze is currently uh, running around as Ghostwriter in some series or another, or at least he definitely had a few series after this book. So there you go. This uh, this guy was a book. Superman seventy five, first print, Death of Superman. Uh, this is the non enhanced or non bagged version, uh, so it's not the Tomb of Stone looking comic version that came with all the other polybag stuff, nonsense, cards, and newspaper clippings. Uh, so that was kind of fun. I never had this one before. Um, didn't really need it, but for a buck, uh, I will certainly take it. Uh, I need it for a book. That's what I'll, I'll say. Uh, I wasn't going to pay anything more than that for it, but I'm certainly very glad to have it at that price. Nice looking copy. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, this guy was four bucks. Super Spider-Man Special Edition. Uh, number one, this was a book that you got if you donated to UNICEF back in the 90s. It was like, I remember going to a comic shop. There was like a card on the table uh, with a picture of the cover and UNICEF's logo and says, hey, send in five bucks. We'll eventually send you this comic. I It was a pretty long time, I think, before they sent the comic. And I don't remember how they sent it. Uh, I, I don't remember it coming in very bad condition, but I, for some reason, remember being a little, uh, having a little shortness of breath when I went to, uh, pull it out of the mailbox, and, in, in that it wasn't very, um, very well protected, uh, but I can't, I can't remember exactly how it was, uh, packaged. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I remember it coming, uh, but it took a while, and, uh, yeah, that's how, that's how this book came about. It's, uh, you had to donate to UNICEF. Uh, so there is a version of it that's bagged. Uh, if, if, you know, you got it and you didn't open it, it came in like a poly bag. Uh, this is not in the poly bag. It does have the poster inside, so if you do look for this book, I would recommend you, uh, check the inside and make sure the poster's still there. Um, it would be nice to have gotten the poly bag version, but this is an excellent looking copy, so I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, but it's definitely got that 90s awful venomness where you just, they just want to slap teeth on and tongue and slobber and it was the beginning of the end of Venom. The oversaturation. Uh, Amazing Sp Scarlet Spider number two. I always forget about this uh, little series. This technically is part of Amazing Spider-Man. Technically. Uh, because during the Clone Saga, Amazing Spider-Man took a break for about two months and said was replaced by Amazing Scarlet Spider 1 and 2. Uh, that happened also with the other Spider-Man series. So uh, while this doesn't fall into the the uh, uh, the number uh, sequence of Amazing Spider-Man, I don't think it's even considered when they when they revert the numbering back. Uh, although I'm not entirely sure on that, um, but it's still a cool thing to have. And and yeah, I always I always forget that I don't have it, so thought I'd pick it up. Need to get number one. And there's also non-enhanced versions of these books. Um, the enhancement is this wacky neon nonsense uh, that's on every one of these Scarlet Spider covers. Uh, the non-enhanced version just doesn't have that, and I think the background might be colored a little differently. So I'll be on the lookout for that. Those are certainly harder to uh, come by. Incredible Hulk. 474, the last issue of the original series. Uh, again, very cool to have the last issue of this. This is one I've been searching for for a while. Uh, didn't want to pay a ton for it. I think I saw it once for about $15. Not going to pay that at all. So I picked this up for $4, I believe. Uh, good price, clean book. Gotta get it. Hulk number 15, this is actually still in the bag that I bought it with from, so it was three bucks. This is the first appearance of Red She Hulk, who is not doing anything currently, and is currently, spoiler alert, depowered uh, in the Marvel Universe pre-Secret Wars, so who knows where she's going to fall during after Secret Wars, although my bet will be that uh, no one's really going to, she's 
he's going to be left on the uh, shelf for a little while. So I don't think... Uh, unless he's part of that Totally Awesome Hulk series. But we'll see. Um, anyway, it's cool to have a first appearance of a character. Um, yeah, that's about it. Nothing, nothing special. I think this might have been mildly hot at one point, but um, I, I don't think it goes for very much at all now. But still, cool to have first appearance. Uh, I was happy to find this one. Rescue number one. I didn't know they did a rescue one shot, um, so I thought I grabbed it based on the fact that I haven't seen it before, and uh, and I think she her uh, rescue might or at least Pepper Potts as rescue as like a Iron Woman character uh, might be the second series. Uh, so let me go back a little bit. Uh, they teased that there's gonna be two Iron Man series coming out. Uh, after Secret Wars, one is obviously Invincible Iron Man with Tony Stark, and the other one, uh, I remember reading a, a, a rumor that it might be Rescue uh, in her own series, or Pepper Potts as some Iron Lady. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, it was only like two bucks, so I thought I'd pick it up, since I don't usually see it. Uh, Avengers vs. X-Men, Spider-Man 50 Years Variant Edition. Love Marcos Martin, love Gwen Stacy. This is a Marcos Martin variant of Gwen Stacy, so it was a no-brainer. Uh, I think I, I paid more than I wanted to for this. I paid seven. Uh, I would have liked to have gotten it for five or below, but uh, I don't usually see this in a, in like a, a stores. Uh, usually when I find this, it's either on eBay or or uh, uh, online shops. So, and I think the online shop I was going to get this at was it was nine bucks. So. Uh, I was glad to find it for cheaper than that at least. That's really clean copy. So awesome art. Good stuff. Amazing Spider-Man 667 part uh, part one of Spider Ireland. Uh, this is the second print variant, uncolored. Very awesome. Uh, this is another one of those books that uh, I think I mentioned in a video prior that. You know, I go through Amazing Spider-Man uh, back issue bins looking for numbers that I know I don't have. But I also, when I'm flipping through, I keep my eye out for for books uh, that I don't usually see. Even if it's like, a, you know, uh, uh, maybe not a book that I'm specifically looking for. Uh, because there, there are quite a lot that I don't have in, in the number order. Uh, so I'm usually like honing in on like the early 200s, mid 200s, uh, uh, mid three some of the early 300s um i usually try to try to not go too deep into the modern ones uh I, those are the easier ones to get but if i see a book in there like a second print or a variant that i don't usually see i will i will snatch it up and this was this fell into that uh and also with that i got another this is kind of weird so this is another amazing 667 the second print variant they're both a second print uh, one's a different cover than the other. This, I don't know, I, I don't know. So this, I guess this is the second print of the, 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 the regular cover, and this is the second print of the variant that they came out with. This was, like, the cover they did for the, uh, store variants, where they had, like, the, uh, the store names hanging out at the top over there, depending on what your store name was, they would throw it on there if you, I don't know, ordered a certain amount. So I guess they did a second print of that, but on the second print they don't have the store names. I don't know why they do two second prints. Beats the hell out of me. Um, but I don't usually see them, so I picked them up. And that's that. I don't think they're worth anything, but just the, the rarity of them is interesting to me. Or at least the perceived rarity uh, based on the shops that I uh, travel to. Uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 20. Man, I never see this book in back issue bins. Never, 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 never. Not even for like a, a exorbitant price. I mean, you could find this on eBay, I'm sure. Um, and I know I, I see this on mycomicshop.com. But I'm not, I'm not paying the, like, it's, they're asking for like 20 or more for it. Uh, nah, I'm just not going to pay that. Um, I had this a long time ago, got rid of it. I certainly re regret getting rid of it because it was a hard one to fill in my uh, collection. Uh, this was about five dollars, I believe. Wasn't any more than that for sure. Uh, but yeah, so I was glad to pick that out of the back issue bin. Uh, these are the hundred-page monsters, as you can tell. They re reprinted 
They had the the original story in it of uh, whatever number twenty was the spider slayer spider slayer uh, story, and then in the back they reprint uh, two older issues uh, with the spider slayers. So that's why it's so big, and uh, they're notoriously hard to find in, in near mint condition because of how fat the issue is. Uh, you can see down at the corners are not are not very not doing very well, especially this guy down here. But Overall, it's in nice shape, so uh, and I don't find copies very often, so I figured why not. I'll take it. If you see that and you're trying to fill in your Spider-Man collection, just pick it up. Because, I don't know, in Massachusetts it's hard to find. Uh, Secret Warriors, number one. Uh, so the Secret Warriors are going to be in the new uh, Shield um, Agents of Shield season, season three, starting soon. Uh, this was not super high on my radar. Uh, I had the first appearance of the Secret Warriors, but uh, for I think this was like two bucks. You know, I'll take it. Usually, I'll, I'll if I can remember, I'll flip through the Secret Warriors uh, back issue bins. Uh, there's they're always missing like number one and number two, so. I saw number one. Thought I'd grab it. There you go. Uh, what else we got here? This is actually an eBay purchase. This is Mask of the Phantasm. The they, uh, so they called it the newsstand variant. I think this. Uh, I think this is actually the non-enhanced version that was also stole sold in stores. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. What do I want to say about this? So I love I love Mask of the Phantasm. When it came out, I didn't see it in theaters, but I had the VHS. Watched it constantly. I love the the look of that character, the Phantasm. Uh, I love the reveal of the character, and uh, this is technically the first appearance of the character in comic book form. So if they ever use her again, uh, oh, I guess that's a spoiler. It's actually a girl. So you, you see, you go through the whole story thinking it's a guy, but it's a girl. Uh, but anyway, so they uh, if they ever use her in in comics again, uh, this book might pick up. And with all the random animated animated characters uh, that show up in like mainstream DC, like Livewire and Harley Quinn and Batman Beyond, and then their books, their like animated version first appearances in comic book form, end up like skyrocketing. Uh, not so much for Batman Beyond yet, but I, I would keep an eye on that one. So I have a feeling that that one will eventually uh, go up a bit more. Uh, so I thought I'd grab this in preparation for in case that day comes. Because I love this character and I do not want to pay like 20 30 40 or whatever dollars for this book uh, years from now if they ever use the character again. But I got this for like 5 bucks. I think that might have been too much for it. But uh, it's a little beat up. Not, not too bad. It looks great in the plastic here. But there are some ding, some bending uh, on the corners. Uh, you can see if I can get the light to shimmer on the right corner down there. You might be able to catch that little bend. And there you go. Kind of sucks. I was hoping it'd be near mint. Probably more like a fine copy. Uh, the back's got a few uh, bends in it too. But overall, I think it's cool. Uh, I like having the non-enhanced version. I think there's another version of this that's more like a has more like a painted cover. Uh, yeah, so that's about that. Nothing, nothing special. But if you like the character and you don't want it to go out of reach one day, it's cheap, super cheap now. So pick it up by all means. Uh, so now we're gonna get into new releases. Uh, this is Spider Verse number four. I'm still dragging my feet with this series. Uh, probably won't pick up number five because I really, really am not liking it. I like the cover. That's just, that's about as nice of a thing I can say. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it's just it's rough. Okay, the art is just it's just rough. Uh, if any if any of you guys read this and, and like the art, kudos to you. Art is art is not like something that everyone used to like. Um, but for me, it's just not it's just not doing it. I'm not doing it at all. Uh, yeah, so I'll probably skip out on five unless there's some drastic reveal in there that I absolutely need to have. 
Uh, or if I see it in like a dollar bin months from now, I'll pick it up. But I think that's that's. I think I'm done with the Spider Verse. Uh, I'll probably pick up Web Warriors number one when it comes out, just just because. Uh, I think the artist is different in that one, so hopefully they'll be a little better. But we'll see. Uh, renew your vows number four variant edition. So I'm gonna try this new thing, where if I pick up any new release books, I'm gonna try to get at least at least one variant of theirs instead of the regular cover. Uh, even if it's like a one in ten, one in five variant, just just to have something a little more uh, uncommon. Uh, yeah, because mod, modern books, I mean, they go up a bit, but I don't know. I just don't want to. I just don't want to stockpile uh, books that are are not going to be worth a dime. Uh, and you know, you get into this hobby because you like the books, and I certainly do, absolutely. But there is a part of me that's like, well, this is you know, I hope that my investment in money not only provides me entertainment, but then provides me further entertainment of seeing uh, the price go up. A little bit at least a little bit maybe I don't know so like I said uh, this is a variant I'm not expecting this one to go up but in my heart of hearts it feels a little cooler having a variant uh, just a little bit and that's that's something you know uh, so yeah variant issue uh, decent storyline not blowing me away uh, but I do like the cover on the variant so there's that that series I will continue Marvel Zombies number three, number three. Uh, I love the series. Uh, Elsa Bloodstone is the star. Marvel Zombies are who she's running from. It takes place on the other side of the wall in a uh, in Mar in Battle World, so it's cool to see what's going on over there. Even though you know it's what you expect, zombies, Deadlands, uh, but still it's fun since they don't really show a lot of the other side of the wall in uh, the main series uh, but yeah it's cool good stuff hope they uh, keep El Elsa Bloodstone around uh, this guy oh this guy uh, I have a love-hate relationship with this book right here so it's got Venom on it obviously so I picked it up it's a variant edition uh, you know when I see variants uh, I like to with a character I like I like to grab them if I can uh, for cover price, this was cover price, so it's always fun to grab a variant for cover price. Uh, the bad side of this is I absolutely uh, hate the way they drew Venom and colored Venom. Uh, so this is the slobbery Venom, obviously. You can see by his gigantic tongue over there. And it's, uh, I don't know what the colorist was thinking, so, um, so this is supposed to be a black costume, but it's blue. Uh, you know, I don't know what happened. Do they do they run out of? Were they limited on the color black? That's one of my my biggest pet peeves about the black costume uh, and and the way artists render it. I love the black costume, love Venom. I hate when they make the damn costume blue by adding so much shading that it just turns blue. You know, what it would have been that much harder to make the blue black and then have the, the, the black uh, definition, you know, like a dark blue or like the color of this blue. It just seems really wacky and uh, I don't know what the, the the artist on this was thinking. That's my opinion. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I, yeah, I grabbed this, but I kept putting it back down and uh, I was like, you know what, let me just get it. It's a cover price variant. It's got Venom on it. Not crazy about the cover, but... I'll grab it. Uh, so yeah, so I picked it up, but uh, yeah, not not digging that blue costume he's got going on there. Does anyone else feel that way? I certainly do. Uh, this is, uh, I'm just going to show this off real quick. That was the end of the haul. Uh, so this is, I'm only showing this off because I didn't even know they made this anymore. Comic Shop News. Uh, this is the first time I went to the store they actually gave me a copy of this in years. I'm talking, we're talking years, okay? I think the last time I went to a store that gave me a copy of Comic Shop News, this was like 2001. Uh, I, I, I don't know why, but uh, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know they made it. But it's kind of cool that they, they add in uh, the, the Spider-Man uh, newspaper strip in there. You can see, uh, for some reason, Harry Osborn is the Green Go or the Hobgoblin. 
and then out of the paper strip. But it's pretty cool. Uh, I thought that was kind of neat. Glad to see they're still around. They were they were staple. There was like this is how you got your comic news, other than Wizard. You know, as a kid, this is this is what I found out like new, when new books were coming out and who was in them, what was going on in the series. So lots of good memories in there. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it's the end of my haul. I have a my comic shop box coming this week. Uh, so I'll do another haul next week, and uh, that's all she wrote. Thank you.